the deep recesses of one's mind, there is a voice, a guiding light through the darkness, a connection to the other side. You're ready to wake up, you're going to wake up. And if you're not ready, you're going to stay pretending that you're just a little, poor little me. A pathway to spiritual that echoes with enlightenment. The voice of spirit. The voice of spirit. You are a function of this total galaxy bounded by the Milky Way, and that furthermore, this galaxy is a function of all other galaxies. Your journey starts here and now. With your host and connection to spirit, Leo Bonomo. Leo Bonomo. Leo Bonomo. Hi, very, very warm welcome. It's a beautiful sunny evening, uh, one of very few in, in England, um, but at least we're lucky to have it. So a very, very warm welcome wherever you may be, whether it's morning, afternoon, evening or night time. Um, if you would like to make donations to the show, and they're all very gratefully accepted, um, you can go to the archive page on this show, and if you scroll down and you can hit the donate button there, and uh, <clears throat> again, we're very very grateful for any donations that come um okay um if you'd also like to take a look at the book summerland you can find the link on there on my site which is www.leo-bonomo.com and uh, you can uh, click on that and it will take you through to amazon so there's uh, a couple of books that you can buy there Fantastic. Well, we know the show is all about the afterlife. It's all about mediumship and connection and that kind of stuff. And um, uh, what a lot of people are um, into is developing or they become self-developed. There's a, there's a kind of switch that clicks on and they start to see things, hear things um and feel that loving contact from spirit and it's at that point when spirit are really letting you know um systems are on uh, you need to develop and you need to to find somewhere good to develop so um it's obviously key in what we do and so that's what i'm going to be talking about um this evening about developing um there are particular types of meditation that we do when we're developing and it's very different from um, any kind of other meditation uh not just because it's trying to lift ourselves spiritually uh, uh and uh and mentally um but of course we are asking for contact from spirit so that transference of information can be there so it's a very different type of meditation so we'll be going through um some of of what we do um uh in that regard and um that helps to loosen the physical bonds that bar us uh from communicating with spirit and um, communication with spirit is very often described as tuning a radio and it's a very very um, apt way of describing it because what we are doing is trying to um, shift lift or alter our own vibration to make it higher um, in truth uh, we can probably raise our vibration by 5 or 10% <clears throat> if we're really lucky. I'm not quite sure where I am on that scale. Um, but spirit need to come down that 80 85%. And in spirit, the mind works very, very fast. It is lightning fast. Um, it doesn't just depend on um, connections within the brain because of course physically there are no connections in the brain and because it is at um, a much higher vibration you know I wouldn't quite say it's the speed of light but it's very very much um, faster and so what those in spirit need to do is to lower their vibrations it's almost like talking in slow motion so if you can imagine um somebody speaking and you just slow the tape down um to a drawl 
Uh, and that's literally what spirit have to do. And because there are millions and millions of levels in spirit, um, all occupying the same space. So I know that really screws with your mind. <clears throat> um, but, um, um, uh, the, the higher the layers, um, there is a limit to which they can come down. So, you know, people do talk about, um, uh, connection with, um, uh, what we would call God itself and that it is absolutely impossible to do that. Um, some of the very highest guides, um, Silver Birch, uh, uh, amongst others, um, rested, if you like, at a particular vibration in order to make this communication. Um, as we get to the very highest levels um, of spirit, perhaps even a third of the way there, um, my guys just reminded me, <coughs> um, there is no language um, and there are not words to describe um, where they are, what they're doing, etc. Um, there is just no language. Um, so even if we take that degree of about a third, for them to communicate with us is absolutely impossible. There is no language to do it. So there are often um, several intermediaries uh, between levels that have to, in a sense, desensitize the language. It starts to become what we're quite used to, but it is a very, very, very blunt tool. And so as it drops um, a few levels from one level to another, and then perhaps from that level to another, and so on, till we have an in intermediary that um, can pick that message up, drop a few levels to our level, so we can get the information. Um, true connection with extremely high spirits um, is just not possible for that reason. Um, but anyway, so uh, we're going to talk um, uh, about that and the loosening of our physical bonds, our physical restrictions, and shifting ourselves to a level where spirit uh, can communicate. Now, um, <clears throat> I know that for some people, if we're talking about um, dropping levels and that um, we so trust our guides uh, and we have to, especially with certain types of mediumship, um, physical mediumship, trance mediumship, etc. Um, there's an awful lot of trust there in them being who they say they are. But, for example, in trance of um, allowing them to borrow our bodies for a while um, uh, for the demonstration, whatever it might be. Um, so there, there's a, a, a huge amount of trust implicit in that. There is also a huge amount of trust implicit in what we might call um, normal communications um, between ourselves and um, our guides and I say guides as a plural uh, sometimes uh, mediums have many guides um, depending on what we're doing so we have to um, uh, take that into consideration and have our own systems of working when we work like that I have my own I have um uh, a way of uh, when I teach, and I hope to get back to teaching at some point because I have stopped for a while. <clears throat> I do take breaks from time to time. Um, and um, I allow, for example, if we're talking about um, colour heating or demonstrating colour heating that night, there would be a specialist um, for, for want of a better phrase, that steps in, that knows about colour healing. And I have to have trust that my main guide and my doorkeeper, they're looking after the whole event and they're taking care with someone who they trust as well to um, deliver that particular subject. Um, so I work, um, again, in a very slightly um, different way from, from some mediums. Um, so there are lots of things that have to be taken into consideration. So we're going to be talking about that, and we're going to be talking um, a little bit about protection and a little bit 
um, about um, how we can communicate better with spirit. So those are the things that, that are coming up. Uh, if you want to um, next week have uh, a reading, if you want to contact me, then you can um, email me on my site at info at leo-bonomo.com, uh, info at Leo Bonomo. Um, uh, leo-bonomo.com and then you can send me a quick outline <coughs> um, of what it is that you, you want covered and uh, Dee has the honour um, I'm very pleased to say of being the very first to do this this way and one of the reasons that we've done this this way we know that there are a lot of people listening to the show and um, it does go out to uh, many many countries all over the world and obviously with time zones and that people listen but they can't uh, ring up um so or skype or or, <coughs> or chat um so this is one of the reasons that we're doing this so i'm just going to get some information here um very quickly um for for d <coughs> Okay, and, and um, what I'm being given, D, I've actually got a gentleman here that has got grey hair. Um, he's got a grey moustache, and the moustache drops down to probably um, an inch and a half um, below the jaw. There is a little bit of weight with the jaw. Um, there's um, a slightly bulbous nose, and this gentleman won't mind me um, saying that. There is weight with the gentleman. He is around um, I do believe he's around six foot um, and if he's not I do apologize for that but I do believe he's around six foot um, he he is of grandfather's um, age um, or, or era um, but I don't think this gentleman's uh, a grandfather. I'm just going to have a quick listen uh, to, to what he says. What he wants to say is um, that it has been some time that a career change has been needed for you. Um, I'm being shown a wavy line, and this is kind of going past obstacles. So I know for the last couple of years, um, career has been awkward, and he's written that for me and circled it. <clears throat> so I know that that has been um, slightly odd for you. So there is a need for you to change. Um, there seems to be a need for a complete career path change for you. So he's not telling me what you do, but he is saying that, that you need a complete change. There is that old saying, of course, the change is as good as the rest. This is part of it. But whatever you're doing, I hope you would understand um, that what he's saying is um, it's really not suited to you. And he's emphasized that by writing it again. So it's not that you're not um, suited to it. It seems to have changed and it's not suited to you. So there, there is a change. Um, he's uh, written September for me. So I know that seems many, many months ago. It will fly just like that. It will go. But he says, wait till September and begin to look there. Um, that will start to, that new job, um, he calls it very exciting because it's different. But he says there's lots of energy with that. That intimates to me that there's very little energy for you um, in what you do. It's not exciting. There's no real buzz there. Um, so there will be energy there. And that creative energy that's going to be created will help you a lot. There's a real feeling of needing to go into work and wanting to be in work. Um, he's shown me around 20 people. I'm just going to see. And he's written the word new there. So I know that there's around 20 people in the, in the new place that you're going. Um, and he says, all very helpful, very likable people. Again, that intimates there's a slight amount of friction um, with where you are. Um, because of the energy in that place, that will also um, uh, help to get you... Um, uh, rises so I know that abundance uh, financially will certainly come for you this year um, ha as he talks about money he talks about it being 
um, fairly up and down. Um, he's actually taken me back five or six years with that. So hopefully that makes sense to you um, as well. Um, so th those are the main things that he wants to concentrate on as far as career um, is there. And um, now I know um, that there is a relationship that's really needed. Um, he's explaining to me that relationships that you've not been in, um, it's hard to quantify, but if we go for, from zero to 100%, he's talking about them floating around 60, maybe 70% if you're lucky. There is a person that's coming forward for you that has really shared some of the angst and anxiety that you've had. It's been a real problem for them too. So there is an understanding and a connection there. Um, I know, D, that you would believe in reincarnation because this gentleman has just written this. So I know there is that kind of connection and a karmic connection between you and a person um, that is coming forward. Um, it has to be a strong relationship. It has to be, it's very hard to find the perfect relationship, but he's describing this as it needing to be perfect. And he says that um, that relationship needn't be too far away. He's actually written August and he's written the word meeting. But interestingly, he's also written the word house after that. So as I've double checked with him, he's written meeting house. Um, I don't know whether... Um, there is a Quaker connection with you or there is a Quaker place in, in the home or that's relevant in some way. Quakers often describe their places of worship as meeting houses. So I wouldn't take that strictly, but there does seem to be a Quaker connection there. But it's certainly a place called a meeting house. It may be a restaurant. It could be anything, to be honest with you. Um, but he's written meeting house. So there is a there is a place where you will meet this person. Um they are described as strikingly good looking and he says that you would be slightly say again you would be very wary of approaching someone like that um i know people that are um tend to um they tend to be very blase about how they meet people they've heard it all before they've been approach numerous times they can tend to be shallow but this person has again gone through similar experiences that that you have within relationships um he describes them as being very fed up at this moment in time um because they too have been without a partner for a while and so there is something curious about you that will attract them so they will be open having said that I know that there is an attraction between between you both and that person will come forward um, and want to talk to you. Um, it's very, very casual approach. It's almost like, um, uh, you know, what do you think of this place, because, and it's very laid back. Apart from the initial communication, they don't seem to have an interest in you. But that is a false wall, this gentleman here is saying. So I know that that is coming for you and um, and the money too. Um, I can't see a move because as he's showing me, as I'm asking that question and I've got two houses, he's put a cross through the second house. So I know there is no move for you. So that indicates to me that there is a very, um, you're, you're very happy about where you are. There is no need to move. There is no move involved in you meeting this person. So take this, um, this gentleman's great love and um, we uh, do let me know. Um, how this uh, resonates with you hopefully um, um, all of it does um, but do let me know and if there's any um, small need to clarify something then I can answer you in in uh, in the email so do let me know <clears throat> fantastic um, okay so um, in the next part of the program we're going to or I'm I will say we and that is because 90% of what I do um, is is uh, c connected to my guide so there is influence there that's why i tend to, to use um the word we um but what um we are going to be talking about 
um, initially is um, reasons for um, needing to to um, to open up to begin to develop uh, and some of the signs that we should be looking for and then we're going to go from that into um, the need for um, development and where to go so um, if that's something that you're very interested in do continue to um, sorry I'm just looking for a pen here um, do continue to um, listen in and we shall take you from those initial moments of, of um, uh, developing and uh, moving on from that to uh, s some very quick uh, different types of mediums and mediumships and then uh, moving on from there. Um, who you choose to develop with is a very, very important um, decision <clears throat> that you have to make whether that's privately um, with someone being head of the circle who may be a friend um, whether it's a little more formal in um, a church or spiritually centered um, uh, sense or whether it is with any particular organization um, or whether it's kind of weekend development events and that kind of thing. So we'll be talking about that and different types of mediumship. So um, um, if you're really into that and you want to experience yourselves, um, that sweet and loving communication with spirit, then uh, do continue to listen. Um, okay. Now, um, as we're looking um, at development we'll also be looking at some of the things that you shouldn't be do um, uh, such as uh, Ouija boards and, and that kind of thing which will brush over lightly because there have been lots of talks about those kinds of things and if you were listening to uh, Lynn Gibb de Suarte, um, uh, Reverend Lynn Gibb de Suarte, uh, um, a few weeks ago and you listened to that then um, you, you will understand um, as well that the Ouija balls are not a good thing to get into. Um, I can also highly uh, recommend her book, and I shall give you the title of that when we come back. Um, so do continue listening. Um, again, if you want to make a donation to the show, then, then please do. Go to the website, go to the archives, scroll down, and click the donate button um, whether it's a dollar whether it's ten dollars or or something else then um, anything is grateful and don't worry that it, it might only be a dollar um, every dollar counts uh, so fantastic um, it helps to keep um, everything running and uh, if you want to look back at the um, archives and see some of the wonderful wonderful guests we have had and will continue to have then I'm sure you'll see it's very worthwhile just to back those archives up and listen in when you can so um, we'll be straight back after this and uh, we'll be talking a bit more about development this is the voice of spirit your connection to the other side. To understand something spiritually, you must experience it. And in order to experience it, you have to experience it in your imagination. Explore with us by calling 702-425-9230. That's 702-425-9230. Uh, give us a call now. Worldwide callers use Skype name KCOR Radio. Everything that now exists was once imagined. Therefore, everything that is going to exist must first be imagined. Back with your guide to spirit, Leo Bonomo. Leo Bonomo. After these brief words from our sponsors.
Toxins are everywhere, from the air we breathe to the food we eat and the water we drink. In a world where 80,000 known toxins and heavy metals threaten our very existence, how are you going to protect yourself and your loved ones? Introducing Pure Body Extra Strength, the world's first collodial zeolite that helps trap and remove toxins as well as heavy metals from your body that are messing with your memory, clarity, sleep, and focus. Don't just take our word for it or the testimonials from our thousands of happy customers. Check out the hundreds of articles and case studies on the National Institute of Health website proving zeolite's powerful ability to remove toxins. For a limited time, listeners to KCOR will receive 10% off their first order. To get started, go to trypurebody.com and enter promo code Radio 10. Again, that's trypurebody.com. Toxic junk is all around us, but now you can take back control of your health and protect yourself by detoxing with Pure Body Extra Strength. You'll be on your way to sleeping better, thinking more clearly, and feeling more energetic. Go to trypurebody.com right now and get started today. You love them enough to do anything for them. Mom, I need to be wiped. Coming. Including checking NHTSA.gov slash the right seat to make sure they're in the right car seat. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Act Council. Monday nights are about to become hauntingly good. As Reverend Sean Whittington possesses the airwaves with Vegas Supernatural. Vegas Supernatural. Tune in every Monday at 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern for Vegas Supernatural. Exclusively on the KCOR Digital Radio Network. There's a war raging between good and evil. The question is, which side are you fighting on? Tune in Monday nights as Reverend Sean Whittington sets the new standard for paranormal radio with some of the most influential personalities in the world today. Vegas Supernatural, hosted by Reverend Sean Whittington. Every Monday night at 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern, exclusively on the KCOR Digital Radio Network. The all-new KCOR Digital Radio Network. Make a note of it. It's great! We interrupt this program to annoy you and make things generally irritating. At the end of the day, we turn the lights down in the KCOR studio. Oh, sweet. And crank up the hottest club songs from around the world. This is the future. The Grind, mixed by Tina Marie, your Vegas vixen of the high desert. What about the body? What kind of body? Good body. Nice body. Every night from 11 p.m. to 2 a.m. Pacific, the best three hours of commercial free music. New music first. It's time to stand up and dance your ass off. The Grind, nightly and exclusively on the KCOR Digital Radio Network. Come on, it's kind of hot. Welcome back to the Voice of Spirit, your connection to the other side. There's no accidents in this universe. We all show up here with a purpose. There's an intelligence that is a part of everything and everyone, and all of us are connected to it. Connect with us on Twitter by using hashtag KCOR. Even better, join us live in our chat room at KCORradio.com. To get a free reading during the show, call 702-425-9230. That's 702-425-9230. Give us a call now. Worldwide callers, use Skype name KCOR Radio. And now, inspirational clairvoyant medium, psychic, and your connection to the spirit, the host of the voice of spirit, Leo Bonomo. Hi, very, very warm welcome back. Um, okay, so uh, this year, uh, this year, <laughs> getting a bit ahead of myself. Um, uh, this program, we're going to be uh, talking about developing and different types of meditation and the loosening of the physical bonds as we communicate with spirit, and uh, that's essentially described as tuning in. You will hear uh, mediums and psychics use that phrase an awful lot, and it is literally like a radio. It, it is just finding. Um, I was going to say that crackle, um, but finding that crackle, finding that program that's there and 
maintaining that link for as long as you need to, to work. Now, um, it may not seem like it at all, but the world is very, very much more spiritual now um, than it has been um, for a very long time. If we talk about um, percentages of populations, um, there are just over 8 billion of us here. Um, most people have some interest in religion, and lots of people know my views on religion um it tends to be a destructive thing um because it tends to set people against each other you know my religion's better than others and that kind of thing um but um um so there are more people that through religion believe in a life after death um more people that through um experience with mediumship and messages given that believe in after death and more people than are scientifically getting that evidence and we're having more people than ever that are having near-death experiences um that kind of thing um so how would we know when we are ready um to develop it's not a simple question um, however simple the question may sound because uh, there are times um, and I've had in, in, in years past um, skeptics uh, come and sit in my circle not hardline skeptics I wouldn't allow those because it would do <coughs> damage and give doubt to any of the people that sat in the circle but I've had skeptics and they've kind of gone along with it looking for the cracks if we can put it that way and have received messages themselves which they um, and messages that they have given and it's the ones that they have given especially that have blown them away so they've come in for a different reason it's really idle curiosity it's i think sometimes a, a confirmation for them being there seeing what it's like it's rubbish i can go away um, and i'm blessed with um people that come uh even the first time um get a connection and it's a wonderful thing to see that light go on in somebody's eyes where they realize that they've been given uh, what may be to them a very odd thought, not the usual kind of thought. Um, and they've thought, what the hell, throw it out. The other person has not only um, accepted it, but given the reasoning behind it, which really strikes a chord with that person, and to see that this strange set of thoughts, these unexpected thoughts, have a meaning um, for them as a recipient and giver, but also to the person that's received that. And to see that acknowledgement that there is something there is a wonderful, wonderful thing to see. It's one of my favourite things to see. <coughs> um, um, so... Um, we quite often um, get little messages or, or um, ourselves or we sometimes can hear our name being called, which um, has a couple of different uses. Sometimes it's just to um, stop us from stepping out in, into the road. And that's happened to me on a few occasions. Uh, I think if you're um, useful or in my case, 1% uh, useful to spirit, um, they want to keep you going because you know that's what we're here for and we're useful to them um so we can get that kind of um effect we can also begin to see things um ourselves from slight movements um uh, that we pick up um sounds of different kinds um knowing uh, knowingness is also um another way in which our attention is drawn and quite a few people do get predictions so and uh, usually they are um not vivid in the sense of um you know there's going to be a plane crash or anything like that <clears throat> usually it's like i've met this person before and they're going to say that and a car's going to blow its horn and we usually forget until we meet that person there's a slight recognition of i've seen this this stranger before and the whole thing unfolds and the car horn goes off and there's that knowledge 
I've seen this before. Um, so people get uh, um, a lot of predictions that are happening. Um, as I say and, and have said for many, many times, um, I'm a firm favorite of predictions. Um, there is no way that we can cold read that. Um, and if we, um, as a person, um, have a few predictions scattered around here and there, we, and we know we had that dream, um, if it's given in that form, a few weeks ago, and they're coming true, we instinctively know something's going on. Um, is this a special gift I've been given? Uh, or, or sometimes, uh, of course, what the hell is going on? Why am I suddenly seeing these things? Because it's that knowledge within, that recognition of I've seen this before and it's not just been once because I – I can reason away that I must have had a dream or just imagine the whole thing. Um, so it's spirit very clearly saying there are other things in this world that we need to investigate and we need to be aware of. So it can come from sounds, smells which trigger um, very odd memories, um, sometimes pleasant, sometimes not. And, and uh, I wouldn't want you to be afraid of the sometimes not because sometimes that has a great impact. And, and I'm not talking about anything very vivid or scary, but you may get a smell such as bread, which we would think, well, you know, this is breakfast, this is this, this is that. But it, our mind joins the dots and we come to a morning where, for example, our parents may have had a massive row, which months down the line um, ended in divorce. So there's no real connection between all oh, bread, breakfast, summer days, that kind of thing. We join the dots and it suddenly brings up that rather ugly memory. Um, that has an impact with us, of course, because it's an odd thing to happen um, and it brings up a specific memory and as we know um communication works on so many levels there is sight there is smell um there is taste uh music of course is very 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 important in the spheres um it's very important to us here it's very evocative you know it can bring us down to specific moments um in our life um all kinds of specific moments. Um, there's hearing, of course. There's sight. Um, there is knowingness uh, uh, and that kind of thing. So it triggers in us a curiosity. And you will often find that if we don't take the hint the first couple of times or we reason it out and just say, you know, I'm going crazy. It's my imagination. Forget it. Um, spirit will keep on in, in these quite subtle but very effective ways. So if those are things that are starting to happen to you, that would certainly indicate that you either need to speak to a medium um, and again, um, I'm not fond at all of giving too much information to a medium. I tend to work an awful lot better when I have no information at all, because if I do remember something that's given, it does tend to interfere with the message for me personally. Um, but to see, you, you know, um, get some corroboration. Um, so it can happen of two ways. It can be a very idle thing. And as you know, I don't believe in coincidence where we think, do you know what? There's a circle. There's an open evening that night. I'm just going to go along. Nothing else to do. Um, or you may be skeptic or you may have a reason for going. Um, if you do have these reasons for going, then it is a very strong indication that about now is the time for you to seek out. Um, development and there are organizations of course um, some large ones which do development um, on an ongoing basis um, there are home circles you do need to be careful with those you do need to make sure that the person knows what they're talking about um, there are um, others, small churches, which have um, no affiliations. There are um, churches, for example, um, uh, or meeting places that have their own circles. So there are many different ways 
um, of joining the circle or looking into uh, uh, development itself. And the, the most important thing when you first go or you decide that you're going to join a circle is for you to feel comfortable with everybody there. And it really, really doesn't matter whether the person there um, has um, just started their circle, obviously they need experience, um, or whether they're um, a full-blown international medium. Um, that cuts no ice with spirit. It shouldn't really cut any ice um, with any of us. It's how you feel about that person and the other people within the group. And sometimes you'll feel very comfortable about um, everyone, but perhaps not quite certain about one. So there is a slight exception at times. But what you will find is if you're meant to be in that circle, then spirit will move on that person that doesn't need to be there. And it's not done in a nasty way. They just make them feel that they're fed up. You know, they can find a better circle. There are lots of uh, reasons why that person will feel I need a break or I need to move on. <clears throat> so we shouldn't take it as personal at all. Um, so um, finding a person that you can trust and finding out where to go, there are lots of people that do it, but I would certainly, on an initial basis, find a church, find out whether they, they have circles. I would say 99% of them do tends to be cheaper than big organizations as well. There are some free organizations out there, um, but certainly it need not be expensive. Um, and that, that is something that you need to be um, very, very um, aware of. So those are some of the things that, that um, you can do. Now, um, coming back again to the types of meditation, um, when I teach, certainly, um, a meditation should not be too guided. I do find, um, and, and some are on CD and that, and others um, practiced, where the meditation is very, very guided. It's every step of the way something is outlined for you, something is described for you. There are all kinds of reasons given. It shouldn't be like that. Um, now, when Buddhists um, in particular talk of meditation and enlightenment, what they're actually talking about is that moment that spirit connect and guide your mind very gently through a series of um, scenes, if you like. And that's what they call enlightenment. Now, um, it's not like yogic um, meditation. It's unlike any other kind of meditation that you do. So there is a form of relaxation um, before. There is the opening of the chakras or chakras, whichever way you want to, to um, explain it. And these are done in a very gentle way. Um, and we tend to use... Um, the seven most common chakras for this. So um, at the base or the groin, is is the color is red. I always see them as colors. And my way that I've been guided into doing the meditation is to see it as a small pinprick of red light that expands. Now, most of the chakras are about the size of a small saucer. <clears throat> there are some differences, but, you know, we don't need to be too technical um, this evening. Um, so we see that expansion of that um, uh, dull red uh, glow that's at the groin. And I always see a little tube of light, um, almost like a pipette. It just draws that light up to the second chakra, um, which is um, um, the spleen. Now, it's not actually where the spleen is, so don't try not to get confused about that. It's about an inch below the belly button, and its color is orange. And so we see this connection from the red um, and the energy reaching the spleen, and that reacting straight away. With me, spirit tend to use words like um, ignition 
or contact. And it's when it's a bit like electricity through through a wire. You turn the switch on, it hits the bulb, it begins to light up. Um, so there is that connection there, that acknowledgement by the chakra, it is beginning to open. And um, we go from there to the stomach chakra, um, which is um, uh, lemon yellow. And once that has opened as much as it can, because, you know, especially if you're not um, very experienced in this, sometimes it'll only go to, you know, maybe the size of an egg um, and you shouldn't get stressed. The fact that it's beginning to work is good enough. Um, and we go from there, the connection to the heart, which is grass green. And we go from there to the throat chakra, which is um, sky blue. And I always see the third eye, the forehead chakra, as um, um, a kind of indigo. And um, lots of people see it, see it as purple. Um, indigo is a kind of deep blue purple. Um, I always see it as indigo. And then I always see the crown chakra, which lots of people see as ultraviolet. I tend to see that as brilliant white. The crown chakra is six or seven inches above the, the head. Um, so we call it the crown, and lots of people tap the top of their head and say, you know, my, my crown chakra is working. It is actually out of the body. Um, if we want to get technical, there are two or three um, chakras as well below the groin, and in that sense, outside of the body. But we tend to focus on those seven. So when they are all working, what I tend to do is, uh, well, what I do is um, ask for brilliant white light to fill the body, um, beginning at the toes, filling the feet and the ankles, and working all the way up. Um, and as it approaches the shoulders and the armpits. Um, goes into our fingers, wrists, um, etc., and goes back up and fills the neck and the head. Um, and I let it overfill from the crown chakra. So the effect there is of a cascade of brilliant white light that forms like a fountain around us. Fountains and waters are very important signals they're cleansing waters refreshing etc so that it's a very good um um image and what i then do which i don't think anybody else does is we place a plug in the crown chakra so this energy begins to cleanse and you can use it for healing you can use this positive energy for manifestation it cleanses all the bodies we have so this is the physical the mental the astral the spiritual the etheric body it cleanses all the bodies and as we do this over time um once the body is in the state that it needs to be it also begins to um cleanse um the past with us and so in a sense it's, it's a kind of karmic thing so it cleanses this body it starts to erode any memories from the past that are negative and it cleanses the whole thing um and you will see within your own body shape that can get very dark it can get very murky and what it's doing is it's picking up all the things that you don't need um including illnesses not all new illnesses will be cured we have to say that from the start um but it, it collects all this stuff that you don't need and i then um there are chakras in the bottom of the feet and we open those and we let this drain into the earth um right into the core of the earth so that is something else um, um that we do and um as we as we do this we can see that um the cleansing is um very thorough that it begins to build up over time so we are very much more protected and um uh, this has a very, very beneficial effect. And once that is all drained, we close the um, uh, the chakras in the feet and we open from the top again and refill again with brilliant white light. Um, now, <clears throat> um, this has a cumulative effect. And this also is very relaxing. Um, we can enjoy the imagery 
uh, chakras open, they can bring different emotions. There is a definite change, certainly after a time, that you can feel when those chakras are open and they're working. Now, we always use the phrase opening and closing the chakras. Um, in reality, the, sh the chakras don't close. If they do close, it's because we're not there. That energy is with us in spirit. But it's a visual way of saying that we have control and we can control um, the chakras. And that's essential to, to development and to connecting with spirit. So um, that is one of the things that, that, that we do. And you should do this cleansing and opening every time that you sit, um, whether it's for a demonstration whether it's um, for circle, uh, we never stop learning, uh, as as I've said millions of times. Uh, I learn something every day. Um, so we, we, we go through this, and this begins to really relax us. It, it's a fairly slow thing. It isn't anything that should be rushed. So the opening, the cleansing, um, the flushing out, and the re-cleansing, which is the energy that we, we finally work with, um, you, you know, uh, you can take it as slow as you like, um, five or six minutes, ten minutes, whichever way you want to visualize it. So that is something that, that is very, very important. There are times uh, when we open and we open up with experience very quickly like that where we can just immediately see the chakras light up and our bodies fill with light. And we do that on occasions um, because it is something on rare occasions to practice. There are times when we need to <coughs> um, kick in and open um, for various reasons. Uh, so that is something that we do. Um, so it's a very natural process. And the whole process itself uh, gets us ready for the meditation itself so this is a prelude to that and uh, we're going to be talking about that um the meditation and the types of meditation and the reason for the types of meditation and what you you and your guide should be doing as leader of the circle so we shall be straight back after this you've been listening to leo bonomo leo bonomo the host of the voice of spirit Live every Thursday, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern, exclusively on the KCOR Digital Radio Network. For more information on the show, guests, and host of The Voice of Spirit, or to book a private reading, please visit leo-bonomo.com. That's leo-bonomo.com. Your connection to the other side is just a phone call away. The Voice of spirit it is amazing is it not this is kcor las vegas home of the digital radio network broadcasting from a shack just south of area 51 wait that doesn't exist this is the kcor digital radio network now for the news in the deep recesses of one's mind there is a voice a guiding light through the darkness, a connection to the other side. You're ready to wake up, you're going to wake up. And if you're not ready, you're going to stay pretending that you're just a little, poor little me. A pathway to spiritual that echoes with enlightenment, the voice of spirit. The voice of spirit. You are a function of this total galaxy, bounded by the Milky Way, and that furthermore, this galaxy is a function of all other galaxies. Your journey starts here and now. With your host and connection to spirit, Leo Bonomo. Leo Bonomo. Hi, very, very warm welcome back. Um, we're talking about um, development. We're talking about uh, meditation and loosening the physical bonds so that we can communicate with spirit um, better. <clears throat> and uh, just before the break, I was talking about um, one of the, um, I was going to say physical thing. It is a physical thing, but one of the physical things that we do, it's an energetic thing. It's a spiritual thing. And that is um, opening the chakras. Um, 
we use that term, but in effect, we 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 are we are using the terms to open and close to show that we have control of the chakras, control of that energy, how that energy reacts with us, um, that it, we sensitise them so that spirit have a chance to come forward, and that's what we mean by opening or closing the chakras. Physically, they they can't um, close. Uh, we we would just not be within the body. Um, and so we went through that process of cleansing, um, protection, which is done um, every time that we sit. And um, <clears throat> so now we're going to talk about the meditation. And I touched very briefly on meditations. And some people, uh, the meditation is very strict, very guided. Um, and, you, you know, I, I've sat with people and their meditations are more or less the same um they follow more or less exactly the same kind of thing and a real connection with spirit um the spirit guides the meditation and <clears throat> the process is um when i work um i have my main guide that's usually there the doorkeeper or the protector um from from entities is always there um but uh, either my guide or another guide will come in and give the meditation so as usual um just like readings i have no idea what's being said um and there are of course certain things that have to be gone through um but i will take you very quickly through um um, a type of meditation in a moment. Now, the important thing about teaching is that I have um, certainly the doorkeeper there. I may have three or four guides with me. The way that I teach, I allow someone, for example, if they're very interested um, in uh, prediction, for example, um, a specialist in prediction will speak through me um, on Certain occasions my voice will change, but usually it doesn't. Um, and um, they will do the, the circle for that evening and they will either withdraw and we get on with practicing um, or they will just continue the practicing because if, if that's the topic, they will give demonstrations of that. Um, um, so um, that's, that's kind of my setup. But of course, with each student, um, and I've had sometimes 25 students on a night <coughs> years ago, um, what um, they have their guide, um, their doorkeeper, they also have their communicator. And um, so there are perhaps two or three people with each of those 25 people and a medium um a, a tutor's um obligations are to be aware of this in that in that um sense um a hundred people also what's happening outside the circle are there any entities hanging about is there kind of disturbance which sometimes very rarely happens but entities feel that they can manipulate or may not be seen so um the job as a tutor is to be aware of perhaps anything up to a hundred people um development circles are quite popular with spirit as well so if you can imagine an auditorium and sometimes because if we're looking at um, um, a 20 foot by 20 foot room, because time and space and vibration doesn't really mean anything to spirit in a 20 foot by 20 foot room, you could have a hundred thousand spirit. So if you imagine that you're sitting in the middle of this and you've got your, um, uh, colleagues you've got the tutor and there's around a hundred there and if you can imagine um, thousands of people interested in the proceedings and watching you have to be aware of that as well um, so my job um, as a tutor is to be aware of um, all the communicators all the guides how the information is being given to the person 
whether they're joining the dots up correctly or not, to be able to give advice on what they're missing, tell them exactly what they're feeling and show what the communicator's given so they understand where they've gone wrong and where they're joining up the dots correctly and where they're not joining them up. So a tutor is very far from passive and you need... um, This is going to sound like ego. I do apologize for this, but you need that talent. You get some brilliant mediums on stage that do not make good tutors. Um, You've got good tutors that do not work well as mediums on stage. And I know that sounds a strange thing, but to get a combination of both is very rare. And it does sound like I'm blowing my own trumpet, and I do apologise for that. But you, you know, it's it, just because you're, you're great on stage and you have the personality and you're using that energy and you can direct that and make communication, doesn't mean you can pass that on to people. You can pass on basics, but you need to connect with everyone in the room in that way. Um, it is something that can be taught, but mostly it's a natural ability that that happens. So the meditation is done in the same way. And there are similarities during the meditation. And generally, it would um, consist of um, focusing. So there may be um, a path or a corridor. There may be an arch or a door. And that is the first part of going through, um, it, it's a visual thing, but it, it's, it can be seen and felt by the student. And there is usually a rising path or a walk up a mountain. Sometimes we go into a tree and climb inside the tree uh, or elevators. Um, and the purpose of that, what you're physically doing at those points is you're slowly raising the vibration. You will get to a point where a loved one or a guide will come and meet you. And that tends to be the first point where certainly someone who sat for the first time recognizes someone, whether it's a guide from dreams or whether it's a relative, and understands that something special is happening there. And my um, specific meditations, for example, you may get to an arch, which is the crossing point really from this world into the next. Um, And it may be a bridge. And I ask the students to um, remember the construction of the bridge. So I have no process in that at all. Neither does our guides. Um, And what happens from that point is your guide um, uh, for each student will step in, show you a particular crossing in whichever way it may be, so that you're focusing on what you see and you will cross and then you will go to maybe a building, it may be a jungle, it may be an open field, whatever it might be. And there are set points where you have to um, uh, remember or describe while you're in that state what's happening. And to give a very quick example, um, you may have a bridge um, that is made um, of wood, extremely solid, extremely old. Um, it may be rickety, um, even though it's solid, it may sway a little bit, it may be quite steep, it may be flat. Um, but what that would tell me is whether you are fully grounded in your mediumship or have that capability, whether there are doubts, um, if there are holes in the bridge, you know, it may describe doubts. Um, it will give me a lot of information on how you're connecting how you work, and um, the state of your mind. So even the bridge and crossing it will give me an awful lot of information. Um, And then there's the experience itself, um, whether we're um, lying on a beach or whether we're we're paddling in water, whether we're standing under waterfalls, um, um, connecting to animals, Uh, whatever it might be is all information that's given and you're then asked to um, you're given something 
which you need to take back. Um, and <clears throat> so that is the process. That can take 10, 15 minutes sometimes. Um, and we are then taken regressively back to the bridge, um, back towards whichever way we've arrived, there is a reversal of that through to perhaps that door and then there is a grounding so that you are very aware your mind is back in your body and you're very aware of where you are, um, uh, 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 where you're sitting and your connection with the floor and your connection with the room and the circle. Then what I do, and it does depend on time, um, I will go to each student, show them what they've experienced, tell them what they've experienced, explain some of that so that for new students that have never been there before, they have an understanding that I do know what I'm talking about, um, which is important to give them the confidence to let them trust me. Um, so I explain what they've seen. I've explained sometimes the emotions that have been there. Um, I tell them what the object is that they have been given. I explain the reasons for that connection and then we move on from there. So you can see that um, a spiritual meditation for, for development and connection to spirit is something very, very, very different. Um, it is, of course, relaxing, but in a sense, the relaxation is a small part of it. It's the fixing in the mind of the reality in which you are entering the physical aspects of that, the connection with and interaction with um, whatever you may meet in, in that particular meditation. And as I say, um, it, may, it may say, um, here is a building which you are asked to describe and remember and walk through. Um, and the state of that building will show perhaps um, uh, the state of, of life um, that you're in at that particular moment, certainly in a spiritual sense. It, it tells an awful lot about that person. So um, a spiritual meditation is very, very different. It bonds the connection between the tutor and the students. It creates a wonderful energy that um, can physically be felt but it engenders that trust that the tutor knows what they're doing so the tutor has to be aware um, every millisecond what's happening with each of those people and the interaction between um, the communicators um, etc um, one of the fallacies is that um, uh, your guide um, is uh giving you this information from a communicator. That's not the case at all. Um, we all work very differently. Our minds work differently. The associations work differently. And so we all have in our minds um, uh, a kind of mini dictionary. We have an associative mind. So we associate particular things with other particular things. And none of us work the same. So a red balloon may have um, a particular connection and image and feeling with one person. And it will be a hundred different things for a hundred different other people. So we all have this private vocabulary. And um, what development does is to make connection with that vocabulary what it does is it, it highlights those associations you naturally have in the head. And then the guide um, will begin to expand that vocabulary, make a more direct link with it. Um, and as that moves on, um, more and more subtleties will be introduced to um, that um, 
that image. So the image that I'm being given at the moment is of a red balloon. And you may find that it's slightly deflated and resting on the floor. And that will have um, a very exact particular meaning. Um, not necessarily that someone's been brought down to ground level. It isn't always logical. Far, far from it. Um, or you may see the balloon quite still in a room. Um, you may see it still in the garden. You may see it drifting quite violently to one side as though it's been blown or the other. Um, you know, there's a hundred different ways in which that balloon can be acting and each way will have its own specific meaning so that if you're shown by the communicator that red balloon uh, moving quite swiftly parallel with the floor and then suddenly dropping, that will give you all the information you need at that particular point to pass on that information to somebody else. So they very much work with us. And what the guide that's there sort of overseeing um, the the proceedings, uh, whether you're giving the um, uh, uh, a private sitting or whether this is a demonstration, the guide's job is to tell the communicator in which way your mind particularly works and in and what association with a thing, what that means to us as a medium. So it can be very simple to say, hi, my name's George, Ethel over there is my wife. Um, it's very simple, but you know what they say, a picture paints a thousand words. Um, and it does. So just like a smell, you know, we can be sitting there waiting for communication. We can get a particular smell and we can say, my God, I was on Brighton Beach, 1969, and this happened. And what you do in a sense is re recount what happened because that is the message that the communicator is trying to give to, to this other person rather than say, you know, my name's George, um, what I want to talk about. In an instant, they can give that image and you know exactly what the person in spirit's meaning and that it is a definite connection with the other person. And from sometimes one, but sometimes half a dozen quick images, literally that quick, we can give an hour's reading from that because what the, the communicator will do will add to that as we go along. It will give another little um uh, memory or it will give another piece of information uh, or it will give you a smell which takes you in a slightly um, different direction again um, and it, so it, it fills in um, everything in spirit is done by telepathy it's all mind to mind so they don't physically talk um, they can give you their thoughts and you can hear them as a voice um, but the preferred way for spirit to talk or to communicate is is essentially pictures, smells, sounds, those things which trigger, if you like, emotion. And to trigger in a split second half a dozen emotions will give you a whole reading there and then. And emotions are what we live on. It's the memories that bring these people back into contact for all kinds of reasons, whether it's just a remembrance, whether it's um, to say that um, this is going to happen um, or this is happening around you, whatever it may be. So it is not um, communication in the way that most people would understand it of my name's Bert. I worked at an engineering company. Doris is my wife and we had a dog. They could say that. But if they give you fractions of connections, um, as well as a name, really I don't work in names as, with names as people know. Um, but if they give you that information very quickly, um, it cuts out anything that's, that's unnecessary. Um, and what I see, for example, um, I may see an image of, I might have a gentleman and have an image of Cary Grant, uh, which everyone would know. It doesn't mean Cary Grant is there. That's not the object of the, the, the purpose of, the, um, um, of it. What it's saying is this gentleman had 
a resemblance to Cary Grant. And when you mentioned that to the person, they say, yeah, lots of people said that or, or something similar. Um, so, you know, the way in which the information is given isn't always, if you're not used to this work, logical. But there is a definite pattern there. So um, there are ways in, in working. And what we do, um, eventually, these um subtle connections expand they will change because we've gone beyond if you like um kindergarten level we now need another language for the next stage of school and things change and they become much much more subtle at times they can be slightly misinterpreted um but that tends to come with experience where that happens less um um, but the language changes, and then, of course, we get to the next school and perhaps university, um, uh, if we're really lucky. Um, and I, I'm not saying I'm there. Um, but we, you, you know, the language is forever um, evolving. And that's exactly where spirit wants us to be. So an enormous amount of information can be given with just a picture. Um, so hopefully that's helped you a little bit um we're going to be continuing on this theme after the break um i'm also going to talk a little bit about harry houdini so we'll see you um after the break but if you have any questions if there's anything that you want to know um if there's anything that um you would like to ask or you know do do skype in do join us in the chat room do join us in uh, in twitter um wherever you may be you know if it's on your phone and you're at work nip to the toilet type it in whatever you want to do um but we shall be um straight back after this so we'll welcome anything and if you do want readings do go to info at leo bonomo dot com for free reading and we can do that next week see you after this this is the voice of spirit your connection to the other side to understand something spiritually you must experience it and in order to experience it you have to experience it in your imagination explore with us by calling 702 702- 425-9230 that's 702-425-9230 uh, give us a call now worldwide colors use skype name kcor radio everything that now exists was once imagined therefore everything that is going to exist must first be imagined back with your guide to spirit leo bonomo leo bonomo after these brief words from our sponsors Adopt U.S. Kids presents What to Expect When You're Expecting A Teenager Learning the Lingo Today I'm going to help parents translate teen slang. Now, when a teen says something is on fleek, it's exactly like saying, that's rad. It simply means that something is awesome or cool. Another one is totes. It's exactly like saying, totally, just shorter. As in, I totes love going to the mall with Becca. Another word you might hear is jelly. Jelly is a shorter, better way to say jealous. As in, Chloe, I am like so jelly of your unicorn phone case. You don't have to speak teen to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will think you're, um, rad just the same. To learn more, visit AdoptUSKids.org. A public service announcement brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt US Kids, and the Ad Council. Alien Deceptions, a suspenseful sci-fi romance thriller by Tina Marie, featuring the tantalizing Erica Jones and the mysterious Russell Hamilton. An out-of-this-world book of fiction, based on years of document facts and files the government does not want you to know about. At least, not yet. Alien Deceptions by Tina Marie. Available now at Amazon.com or get a signed copy at TinaMarieEntertainment.com. Get your copy now. You are listening to the all-new KCOR, The Core. KCOR, broadcasting from Las Vegas, Nevada, to the entire universe. 
Good afternoon, everyone. This is your captain. I'd like to welcome you on Jackpot Airlines Flight 1610. Service to lost wages. They say what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Well, apparently, they need a reality check done Vegas style. Vegas! 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 Tune in Wednesday nights, 9 p.m. Pacific, 12 a.m. Eastern, for Reality Check, hosted by Jessica Johns, exclusively on the KCOR Digital Radio Network. Biggest star in the world, bigger than Britney and Christina put together. If it's happening on the Vegas Strip, you'll know about it here first. You are a dirty little fun haver. Join Jessica Johns as she explores and goes behind the scenes of what's hot and what's not from the best entertainment vegas has to offer to national celebrity gossip that's crazy absolutely crazy jessica has her finger on the heartbeat of the city and she's waiting to share it with you reality check hosted by jessica johns wednesday 9 p.m pacific 12 a.m eastern she does vegas right yeah baby <laughs> If you love them enough to sit through their favorite boy band with them, then surely you'll check NHTSA.gov slash the right seat to make sure they're correctly buckled in the back seat. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Welcome back to the Voice of Spirit, your connection to the other side. There's no accidents in this universe. We all show up here with a purpose. There's an intelligence that is a part of everything and everyone, and all of us are connected to it. Connect with us on Twitter by using hashtag KCOR. Even better, join us live in our chat room at kcorradio.com. To get a free reading during the show, call 702-425-9230. That's 702-425-9230. Uh, give us a call now. Worldwide Colors, you Skype name KCOR Radio. And now, inspirational clairvoyant medium, psychic, and your connection to the spirit, the host of the Voice of Spirit, Leo Bonomo. A very, very warm welcome back to the last, um, um, the last quarter. Um, it always seems to go so incredibly fast. Um, hopefully you've found um, this uh, very, very... A uh, brief introduction, introduction, I can't talk now, um, to uh, development and what goes on and meditation and the type of meditation and how um, we, we get messages and that it is um, certainly initially our own interpretation, our own association with certain things that, that are given from spirit. Um, and there is the problem, of course, of um, schizophrenics who also hear voices. Um, and uh, the difference, of course, is that they're hearing uh, and being ordered to do horrific things to other people. Um, there is obviously a huge difference between those kind of messages and the wonderful messages of love and confirmation of survival of what we call death. Um, uh, if, if you listen to the first two um, or three shows um, going back um, last year, um, there was a wonderful lady, good friend of mine, Dr. Emma Bragdon, and she's at the very top of her tree with this. And she wrote a wonderful, wonderful book called Spiritism and Mental Health. And there is certainly um, a very strong and growing level of psychiatrists, psychologists, etc., that are accepting that this communication is real, um, that it is to do with what um, certainly in Mexico and places is called spiritism, and it's a very popular term. So it's spiritism as in connection with spirit, not spiritualism, which is um, a religion on its own. Um, there is certainly a strong connection between the two. Um, but th there are more psychiatrists, etc., which are coming round to understanding that the voices are real, but there is a stark, stark difference between um, you, you know, uh, the loving communications and the joy and the wonderful memories that come through with perhaps, um, you know, murdering and dismembering children and those kind of things. So it is, it is a spiritual connection 
and uh, oh, that is a spiritual connection, um, but it's very, very much of a negative type. Um, and it is just to sow um, destruction and disharmony um, and, and you, you know, emotional pain, certainly, um, but physical pain as well. And that goes for the person that's been contacted and harassed and ordered to do terrible things, um, as well as for the victim and victim's family. You know, it, it's a tragedy all around. But as it's more becoming known that there is this connection, it's just the type of entity that comes through, that's all the difference is. Because schizophrenics hear voices. You know, they experience these things. Um, and where it has been sadly um, misunderstood you know, those people are taken away, they're injected, they're lobotomized, um, etc. Whilst uh, mediums give these wonderful um, and should be giving wonderful messages of, of an existence and take away that fear of dying and what may happen. Because so much of it is not true um, at all you know, um, that, that religions tend to give. And uh, speaking as a, a kind of um, ex-Catholic myself, you know, luckily I saw spirit from a young age. And when I was being taken to church, there, there were quite stark differences between what I knew in a wonderful, wonderful feeling and encapsulation of love and what this guy was saying on the platform. Um, the two didn't correlate very much. Um, so in, in a sense, I was blessed. Um, there is a very famous gentleman um, uh, who lost uh, his mum. And when he was on stage um, and the news was passed to him, uh, he promptly fainted. It affected him so badly. Um, and um, that terrible, terrible grief... Uh, would not allow his mum to come through. Um, and so um, in a kind, I suppose, and this is only my own theory, a kind of desperation of needing some confirmation because the gentleman was a, ma a magician and escapologist, and you've probably worked out by now I'm talking about Harry Houdini, because he could see all kinds of ways in which it could be reproduced. And I say reproduced, and I do not use the word faked for a very good reason. Simply because you can reproduce um, something doesn't mean you're doing it or getting it the same way. I, I can give you my my guys just give me a lovely um, example here um if we believe um that man landed on the moon we know how many millions and the time it takes etc etc but we then see a film uh you know let's say made last year of a man landing on the moon it's a reproduction but it is it is a reproduction we know it happened or probably happened in the 60s but what we're seeing is a reproduction those people have not gone to the moon it's just a film and one of the things that skeptics latch onto in which houdini um convinced himself um was that if i can reproduce it and I know I faked it by reproducing it, then everyone falls under the same umbrella. And because of his, um, unfortunately, or fortunately actually, in meeting many fakes that he outed, which actually is a good thing, it's a very good thing, I'm in favour of that, uh, believe it or not, um, but because he met so many, it reinforced this very stubborn idea that there was no connection at all. And the simple message that Harry Houdini was waiting for from his mum was forgive. Um, now, we come across as we train and we give messages to people that have such a grief, such a grief, that it holds back that person in spirit, but it blocks that communication. And 
one of the main reasons for communication or wanting that communication from someone is because of the grief that's there. So they don't kind of marry up. It, it's like two um, positive ends of magnets. Um, they'll keep bouncing away from each other. They don't attract, they repel. And it's something that we have to be very careful of in giving messages to people because that bond is uh, and that reassurance and that grief is so strong, it actually stops the communication. And I've had many examples of that um, during my life and certainly with teaching. And I had a lady that sat in my circle and all she wanted was that proof. And when little bits of proof were coming through, because she wanted specific proof, um, she wasn't convinced at all. Um, but her grief was so strong for her, the loss of her son that he never came through to her directly and she wouldn't accept anything unless it was very specific. In the end, I had to throw her out because she wasn't doing any good. And when people, including myself, were giving her messages from her son to let go, she could not believe he would want to just be away from her. That's how she saw it. Um, so in the end, I, I had to throw her out. Um, she just wasn't having anything. And she'd been there a number of years. Um, and we would have hoped that whilst she was giving messages to other people, people were giving her some messages on other things rather than her son. You would think that that experience of several years would have made her realize that if he wasn't coming through, either to one of us or to her directly, there must be something stopping it. Um, so it's very important. People can want messages for the wrong reasons entirely. Um, one of the things it does is it holds back the person in spirit. They cannot progress <coughs> because there is a strong negative attachment um, between that person and the person that's missing. Um, and um, it causes them pain. They're very aware of the pain that, that the person that's grieving is feeling. Now, I would stress there is a difference between a proper act of mourning and there's no time limits, you, you know, there's no set way of dealing with this. We're all very different. There is a big difference between correct mourning and that adjustment and just this constant um, craving for that person to be back here with us, which of course is never going to happen. Um, so it, it tends to be more of a concentration of our loss in a very negative, unhealthy way, rather than the person in spirit. The person in spirit can gradually get used to that and that can break off. That isn't necessarily so with us that are here that feel these things so strongly. Um, there is no magic formula to how we deal with grief. Um, and we get wildly um, different versions, you know. Uh, for some people, it's just like, <clears throat> forget it, throw yourself into work, you know, just get on with the job at hand. That works for them. Others need um, time alone, you know, and may give up a job and, and may deal with it in that way. Um, some people will just want to voice it and that helps. Others want to keep it very personal. There's no two ways of dealing with this, but there is definitely a positive, healthy way in which we deal with it and a quite a destructive, negative way in which we cannot deal with it at all. And that is not healthy for the person in spirit. And quite often people will come, especially if they've lost children, especially if those have been quite tragic circumstances, and they want a message from that child. Um, it's not conducive. And I suppose that the, the best way that I can explain that is obviously to be a medium, you're a very sensitive um, empath anyway. Um, and what we do when we connect is we make ourselves extremely sensitive, even more so. Um, and that's the act of opening up and connecting. And what happens when that child comes back, 
Uh, and what happens with every spirit that comes back, if they're not used to communicating or it's the very first time, they relive their passing. And they will relive, for example, um, the horror of it. Um, let's take an example of an adult being stabbed and, and cut. And they we tend not to feel the pain, but we can certainly feel the horror. It depends really, I suppose, in a sense, how pain is caused. Um, but stabs and that we generally don't feel. We'll feel a thump. Um, the body anesthetizes it. If we know we're going to pass, the rest is just something that's enacted. We don't feel it. But if we're feeling pain, if we've been hunted down, we feel the horror of it and we relive that passing. And that person goes through that. It's something they have to adjust to. And gradually over time, the more they communicate, that doesn't really interfere. Um, but if they're coming back for the first time, they relive those moments there's an awful lot of emotion because they understand also the emotion of the person who got the news or who saw it happen in the event of maybe a child being run over and, and you know, flung through the air and that emotion. Um, so the child goes through that. The person who wants, the mother and father who want that communication, they go through that and all that information all that emotion has to go through the medium. It's a very destructive thing. So we have to be selective. Um, there are ways that we can distance ourselves um, a lot of the time. Um, I would say probably less than half. Um, but if we've been true to ourselves and true in, in giving all that we get, it, it's not something that we can shield ourselves from properly. And I actually think that's that that's the right thing to do. You know, we have to be true to ourselves and true to the recipient in giving as much as we can um, at that moment that we're doing um, the reading. Um, but some of this is very destructive. So not only does it not cause um, a lack of grief, it causes a reliving of that moment and all the emotion that comes through. And certainly with the person that's left here or, or the parents are left here, it is very destructive because it just digs up those emotions once again. And that real sensation of loss is reinvigorated. Um, and it certainly doesn't do the child any good. Um, and they would not want to repeat um that connection, that communication. And so it's more likely they will stay away even more. And of course, what happens on occasions is once they've had that communication, um, the parents want more and more and more. And that is destructive in itself. So there are reasons certain people will not come through. Um, generally, spirit um, are very happy to be where they are. Um, not at all flustered that they've passed into another world. Um, they can and quite often do <coughs> um, um, sever links with the earth and just move on as they naturally do. Um, so some just do not want to come back. They like to be remembered, um, of course. Um, and you may find this strange as well, but um, I'm transcribing um, some Leslie Flint recordings, um, which are, are going to come out in, into a book. Um, and and um, some of those um, in the recordings um, just want to leave Earth behind. They've done their bit. In the blink of an eye, those that care for them will be there with them again, and they'll meet again, and they've left Earth behind, and they want to move on. And some never make contact um, and have no wish to do so. They are in a much happier place. Um, so, you know, there, there are um, those considerations to make. Not everybody that passes wants to come back Um a majority do, of course, because they just want to let their loved ones know they're okay and everything's fine. Um, but there are all kinds of reasons why um, spirits do not come back. And some people do not get any connection or very little connection. I'm, I'm in a slightly 
in between state with that because my dad, although he was a twin, um, never believed in the afterlife. And after two years, he finally contacted me. Um, and we had a very, very brief discussion. <clears throat> um, and he passed in 98. And I probably, I would say about half a dozen times had communication from him. And it's literally just a quick hello, um, etc. cetera. Um, he knows I do not need the proof. Um, so that's one reason. It doesn't mean he loves me any less or I love him any less, et cetera, et cetera. Um, one of the main reasons for coming through is to provide proof. He knows I don't need it. You know, in the blink of an eye, I'll be there with him and we can have all kinds of conversations and interactions. Um, so the main basis of spirit communicating um, and the main thrust of it all is to prove that they're fine. Um, there is no such thing as death, you know, dead, gone, that's it. That just doesn't happen. Um, and, you, you know, messages of comfort. And that's the whole reason that spirit communicate. Um, but if there is no interest in um, communicating with people, you know, sometimes people die alone. Um, and they've lost their family, they've lost their friends, they've not communicated with anyone for years. Um, very few of those come through, except perhaps a, as strict evidence. Um, you know, as far as they're concerned, the life is over, um, that's done, they've moved on. Um, so not everyone in spirit within your family, if we bring it down to that level, will want to come through. Um, I learned um, several very valuable lessons. Um, one was my cousin many years ago had a 40th anniversary. She said all the family are going to be there. I imagine 50, maybe 60. Over 250 turned up. Um, to be honest, I wouldn't know them if I spoke to them. Um, I wouldn't know them on site, certainly not. You know, there was second, third generation um, uh, cousins um, uh, there um, and their children's children. I wouldn't know them at all. Um, no connection with them ever in life. Um, so, you know, th there's there's that. Um, uh so we don't know all our family. Um, it's one of those wonderful things when we get over, we may be introduced to family. And when I'm talking about family, um, we're, we're talking about groups of thousands, thousands. Um, school friends we've lost contact with that we were really good mates with, you know, and perhaps our parents decided to move and that was it. We never saw them again. Um, work colleagues, school friends that we met. Um, there is a, a reintroduction to those, but also thousands of family. Should we want, if we have that interest in, you know, following our ancestral tree, that's something we, that we can do. Um, but it, it's very much um, something that has to be wanted. But our families generally are much, much bigger um, than we can ever imagine. I did see a program many years ago, and I have mentioned this. It, it's called Hair Hunters, H-E-I-R. And it was basically the hairs to an estate, and uh, companies would track them down. And people would find they'd got, brothers and sisters and uncles they never knew existed sometimes they come through to provide evidence because you can track that um but generally they wouldn't come through there are many people that we're connected with that never come through to us so we're really really blessed when people come through and deliver their messages it is a small fraction um but it is something that's very real. I do hope that you um, have enjoyed um, tonight's program. I hope that it's helped you if you're thinking about development and uh, the places to go and look for development and what a good development teacher 
um, should be, and uh, it helps you find someone. It's a wonderful, wonderful life-changing experience in itself. So I hope it's something that you've enjoyed. Um, if you do want readings, please call in. Um, if you can't call in live, then do um, make contact with me at info at leo-bonomo.com. Do visit my site. Um, I'm starting to get the blogs together again on there. You can visit me on Facebook. Um, I don't use Twitter much, I've got to say, but I have an account. Um, but other than that, um, ah, there's a gentleman called Dave Allen, a wonderful, wonderful comic, uh, Irish comic, and he says, may your God go with you. So I will say, may, your, may the creator go with you and any religion that you have. God bless. Bye. You've been listening to Leo Bonomo. Leo Bonomo. The host of The Voice of Spirit. Live every Thursday, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern, exclusively on the KCOR Digital Radio Network. For more information on the show, guests, and host of The Voice of Spirit, or to book a private reading, please visit leo-bonomo.com. That's leo-bonomo.com. Your connection to the other side is just a phone call away. The Voice of Spirit. It is amazing, is it not? This is KCOR Las Vegas, home of the Digital Radio Network, broadcasting from a shack just south of Area 51. Wait, that doesn't exist. This is the KCOR Digital Radio Network. Now for the news.